my Star Wars campaign so far, the timeline had gotten altered by the big bad evil guy, and now the players were in an alternate version of the Mandalorian era, where the Empire had actually won and taken over. In one of the missions, there was an alien race that was attacking the Imperials, but little did my players know, it was actually a set of other mercenaries that was causing all this fuss, and this whole feud between the two groups was just a big misunderstanding. Ah, uh, but the players never found that out, cause they ended up massacring the entire village and killing everyone inside. Oops, mistakes happen. What can you do? <laughs> We had a new player who could only play a few sessions before leaving. The character's name was Mila. She decided to play a squib, which is a blue squirrel race. Early on in the adventure, they were at a Sith temple, and a dark spirit had asked them, Do you wish to accept these dark powers? And she's like, Yes, that sounds like fun. Okay, that, that was pretty easy. I had decided that she was <coughs> so easily influenced that the Emperor was going to contact her. That night, when Mila wakes up, she's before his throne. Not like literally, it's a dream thing. Whatever, you get it. You've seen movies before. I, Emperor Palpatine, powerful Sith Lord, and strong in the ways of the dark side, have selected you among all the others because I can see it in your eyes. Blink, 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 blink. You are the strongest, most gifted in the Force, but you can be stronger if you... You will accept my help. I can show you even more power. Nah, I'm fine. I already have some. You sure? Yep. What about wealth? If you follow me, I can make you fabulously wealthy, hmm? Nah. Okay. What is it that you desire most? Just going on adventures with my friends. Okay, well... What if you had even more adventures, and even more friends? Nah. What, what do you mean, nah? I have an adequate number of friends and adventure. An, a an adequate number, meaning you don't need more. Yep. Well, that's great that you've, you know, self-actualized at your age. Okay, hmm. Uh, maybe I should try a different angle. <coughs> hey. You seem like a really cool and hip person. You know what's the most cool and hip thing to do? Is making packs with evil Sith Lords. That sounds really cool, right? You know what, never mind, I'm sending you back. She wakes up back on the ship. Kids these days. The players first tracked down Leia Skywalker, who had become deranged and senile, living in an apartment with hundreds of porgs. The players were like, we have to save the Porgs! I was like, okay, uh, but you guys had snuck in here past security. How are you planning on saving them? So I then had to describe as civilians see a grate lifted off to the side, and several wriggling bags get thrown onto the street, with a little octopus hauling them away, because they had just stuffed all the Porgs into sacks and snuck them out. They then had to find somewhere remote to drop them off. So that was our in-game canon as to why there were all these Porgs on Luke's Island. Our party just found them and just dropped them off there. <laughs> the party had to do missions for the Imperials, first in order to get on their good side, but also because by doing missions for them, it helped them scope out info and get to the bottom of what was really going on. On their mission, they uncovered that Coruscant, the city planet, was causing the Empire too much trouble, too big a risk, so the Empire had planned to just annihilate it with a Death Star. Wait a second. It's one way to look at it, the destruction of a planet. I think most people would agree that that's a bad thing. But hey, look on the upside. We could, we could have a little fun with this. The players decided to party across Coruscant, racking up tabs and debts, parking their ship in no parking zones to get tickets. Do in eight days? Oh no, whatever will we do? Committing minor crimes which gets them small fees, but nothing major. They eventually meet up with a noble there. Ah oh, yes, the great city of Coruscant. Look out across it and admire it. You know, we've been the center of the Empire and will continue to be so for as long as the world lasts. It's the... it's the rock on which the universe spins. Why, my daughter in her elementary did a project called Our Wonderful World Which Exists. What did you like the most about our planet, sweetie? That it's not a steaming planet of asteroids. <laughs> well, that would be a bad thing, wouldn't it now, darling? There is a Death Star which arrives in orbit above the planet and he's like, Wow, look at that, the... 
Imperials have decided that our planet is is so important that they want to protect it with a Death Star. Isn't that nice of them? The players were like, ah! and they fled on their ship as a green laser charged up and fired, blowing the planet up behind them. Do you think we could have saved some people or warned them? Nah, that seems like a lot of trouble for not much payoff. Besides, we gotta get these porgs to Luke's island first. They then had to go back to Bespin, which if you recall had gotten taken over by droids and was now run by tyrannical ODL-9, who had turned the humanoids into slaves. The players were not happy to go back and not playing around this time, so the evil Bespin droids see a ship crash into the side and go, bah, bah. Where, where's this ODL-9? We need to murder him. Pow, pow. We need to find this evil droid. Where, where's the head guy? I'm not... I'm not going to waste my time murdering hordes and hordes of droids to get the one guy I want. Since the players were working for the Empire, the group finally met Darth Vader and found out it was actually Luke Skywalker. Yes, in this version of the timeline, Luke had taken up his father's mantle and become the right hand of the Emperor. Since the players are pretending to be with the Imperials, he sends them out on a mission to find Ahsoka. And they agree, but little did they know that evil Luke had put a homing beacon on the underside of their ship and had been using it to track them. This eventually came to bite them in the rear. Later on, they encountered a droid, and the droid spoke to them. Boop, boop, beep. I'm, I'm here uh, from my master. You're just standing up, being a good little scouty droid. I speak a little droid, so I can talk to them. <clears throat> uh, beepity, boopin, der boopin, I'm boopies? Hmm, okay, well, I'm not sure what I'm going to tell Luke. Shit, I didn't say that. Anyway, he's waiting for you outside. Shit, I didn't say that either. In order to escape, they had to make their way through an old Jedi temple. Inside, they got attacked by a giant tentacled monstrosity. LP asked, Hey, uh, excuse me. Tap, tap, tap. Excuse me, mister. LP, is that you? Yep, I'm going on a big adventure. Oh, gee golly gosh, I'm just here to eat these people. Can you please not? They're friends of mine. Oh gosh, they're friends of yours? I'll just set them down here. Sorry if I hurt anyone. I was going to make a statement about how not all tentacle monsters knew each other, but uh, apparently I was mistaken. They tried to fly away, but Luke was somehow following them through hyperspace, and the players were like, well, in, in the eighth movie, they had that thing that could let them track them through hyperspace, or, or did they? They talked about it, but I don't know if they ever actually had it, so uh, maybe they don't? And I, as the GM, had to be like, no, 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 it's just a regular tracking beacon. Ah, we see. They eventually remove the homing beacon, shoot the tracker beam, releasing them, and escape. They asked Ahsoka if she'd be willing to go with them on their adventure, and she was like... Yeah, sure. To me, Ahsoka, that sounds like a good idea. It was at this moment Ben knew he fucked up. 